just got finished. I fin- I watched Loki yesterday. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's definitely got some stuff going on, but we'll just, I don't know if this is shocking as people keep thinking this on the internet. Um, but it's, it was an interesting episode. Uh, what did you think overall about it? I've been avoiding any kind of reaction smart. on the internet, just not to, not smart, to taint smart. our episode I should, here. Do the th- um, I should do the same thing. <laughs> I think, but I like to go out on the internet right. and get mad. So, <laughs> it's, uh, I can't I hear do you. that. I hear you. Um, uh, I thought it was good. You know, all of these Marvel episodes, they are experts yeah. at the yeah. cliffhanger. So that's um, um so you know, yet yet again this this episode was too short just because it ended on such yeah, a, so let's on do such a, a little, let me do a little um synopsis real fast for everybody, kind of just get us on the same page and then we can get started with some questions. So in this episode we have Loki and he's working for the time variance authority. Uh, but at the very beginning, we get a scene where the the evil Loki variant captures an agent and kills a bunch of new um, variants agents. And it was in 1985. So Loki. Yeah, yeah it was Renaissance Festival. Was Renaissance Festival. Kind of cool. Then we get Mobius, the agents, and that Loki go and investigate. Loki starts doing his stuff where he's trying to be manipulative, which is really interesting. Uh, and uh, some hijinks ensue, but I like that part. We'll get to this more in depth. Loki figures out that if you hide in a catastrophe where lots and lots of people will die, uh, the time variance authority can't track you because everybody dies and it's no big deal, which is which is very, very clever. And I hope they do more with that. Uh, they end up going to a catastrophe in Alabama, it was a climate change catastrophe, which is very on the nose. Uh, mm-hmm. And then um, we get the variant. We get the, a little, little, a uh, little battle between Loki and some mind controlled people. And then we get the variant her, herself. It ends up being a woman. So the uh, Loki variant uh, is a woman, which I have some clues that could be laid bare about who this person is from the Marvel comic okay. standpoint. Um, and there you go. That was a good synopsis. Thanks. I do that for you know. I do um, I do synopses for a living. You know, that's my that's my job. Oh, for class? Yeah, because students yeah. don't read anything, so you have to kind of <laughs> give a synopsis of what happened. Hey, it's not it's not just students. It's everybody. Everybody does it. No, no, nobody, nobody, read. nobody reads anything. Yeah. I, yeah, except I read a lot. But that's I good. mean, if it's a if if it's a book that they want to read, they'll read it. But if it's something you're sending them, they won't read no it. No way. Who? Why would they? Yeah. Uh, well, right. So let's let's get started. What's your what you got, Mike? All right. So the the first thing I've got is, uh, and I don't know why I didn't ask about this in the first episode, but um, the TVA's batons that they have, um, those are pretty cool. They're really the only thing that the TVA has that's kind of their superpower. Yeah, I guess at least for their troops. Um, do you have any background on those that you can give us from the comics? Or? I, no, I sadly do not. I got a feeling that they just made that up for the show itself. Um, but mm-hmm. there's nothing really from the comics that's sort of even... I mean, there's always... So there's actually a scene where the 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 main woman, I forget her name now, we talked about her last episode. Maybe I can get the notes for last episode up real fast. I mentioned that she was going to be a big part of the show, and she ends up... I was correct on that. Uh, uh, uh Ra- the Ravens. No, it's not Raven. It's uh, what's her name? The troop person. Yes. Oh, what's her name? I don't know what her name is, but um, well, I have the notes right here. So let I me... think she goes typically by a a call sign designation, uh, like on. numbers and letters. I got the notes right here. Her name is R- R- Ravana Renslayer. 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 I thought that was the judge. That is the no? judge. That's what I'm talking about. The judge. Oh, okay, okay, That's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, okay. the troopers. Not she's important, but she's not in the comic. Renslayer. Okay. She uh, first we get her name, so they mention her name in the show, which I thought was nice. Then at, uh, when the when the catastrophe happens and the variant hits those bombs and the, and all those crazy um, multi lines start forming, she grabs one of those batons that you that you were mentioning. And um, right. there's always going to be like totems or um, MacGuffins that you can grab. And like people like that kind of stuff. Like when you're like, pl- like when you're playing a video game or when you're watching a movie or reading comics, 
you like this idea of this thing you could physically hold and look at. Um, so like Thor's hammers, for example, Spider-Man's web shooters, like you know, Iron Man's repulsors. Yeah, Cap Shield. This is kind of, like, everybody likes that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, I right. think it's it's I mean, it's Marvel, it's Disney, it's they're going to be able to make these uh, very iconic looking, you know, and, and at some point, I'm sure you could go to a store and buy them, you know, so no, there's no comic relation to those things. Yeah, I think um, I think the judge had uh, she had a baton on her bookshelf yeah. or something like that yeah. and a helmet. So uh, she apparently like rose up through the ranks. She was one of those troops at one point. Mm-hmm. Now she's a judge. Yeah, I, I really should have paused and looked on that shelf for any kind of trinkets and stuff. I'll do that. I'll do that later and see because I'm sure there's something on there on that bookshelf that's interesting as far as like comic ties. But I just didn't look too deep. The one thing I learned about the batons this episode, and I don't know if this was something that showed up in the last one, but I just didn't pick up on it. Mm-hmm. But the um, the effect that the batons do when they're basically annihilating somebody or something and the effect that the reset charges do is the same. So yeah. whatever whatever tech or magic that's making those things happen, they're they're the same thing. Yeah, the batons and the reset charges. Yeah. And did you notice that when Mobius and Loki are talking, um, Mobius does say that the timekeepers created them and all of all the stuff. So they so like we talked about last time, we talked about Loki. Um, I don't know if I brought this up, but they're not humans necessarily. So, well, so I I asked you a question or said something like. They're all Earthlings. Yes, they're not. And you said they're not, but you're not going to reveal what they are. No, they're not. Yet. They're not Earthlings. I guess I can reveal it now. Um, for my for my research, they are some kind of clone. Um, so they're they're created from the Timekeepers. So again, they're not human beings. Uh, so I think mm. that's, that's going to be something that probably will come up later. They're just they exist in this place for this specific purpose. And in, I, in the comics, don't they all kind of look the same? No, I didn't read the comics. Uh, I had to read a synopsis okay. of it, so maybe. You know, but they all look different from my, from what I looked at. They looked a little different. Okay, I thought I saw something that they were all based on the editor at Marvel. What? Um, that there's some editor at Marvel that apparently Luke Wilson is is made to look a little bit like so well i know morbius if you look at the picture that uh, the picture i showed you of morbius uh he looked he had a mustache and black hair so he looked just like that so maybe that you might be right you mean you mean mobius yeah. mobius mobius okay what did i say Mor- morpheus morbius it was almost Mor- like uh, morpheus from uh the matrix and yeah. Mobius. yeah so yeah i think you're right they do look kind of similar but they all look kind of but i'm looking here and they all look a little bit different all right so they might be clones yeah, I mean, I think if you're talking about story development, building on these ideas, a uh, story, a future story about how these people who keep the sacred dot timeline in check, they don't really have any identity outside of the sacred timeline. I think that could be a really interesting story. I like that conversation that Mobius had with Loki about he's never been on a jet ski and his only job is to make sure. Right. And then at the end, and, and it's supposed to be like a little end like part. Like uh, he was saying how at some point the timekeepers will fix it. So there's no more variants. There's no more. Um, um, what what do they call the fake timelines? The the I think they don't call me anything. Do they talk about chaos? Uh, no, um, but they, they they call the they call branches branches. There won't be any more branches. Right. And he was saying that mm. it will all will collect at the end of time, which I thought was cool. It's like. Uh, it's the same kind of idea. If you look at from like the Christian, if you if you're a Christian, you believe that you do good works on Earth. You try to save as many people as you can. And at some point, uh, it's all going to end, and we'll spend the rest of eternity uh, in he- in heaven together, which is terrifying when you think of eternity. But I don't like to think of eternity. I, I get nightmares. Um, well, they were talking about Ragnarok a little bit during that part too, because they, that's yeah. the. That's the apocalypse that clued Loki into this whole idea yeah. of the variant hiding in apocalypse. Did you notice that the the population number was like nine? Very very low. Right, yeah, nine thousand seven hundred. Like I guess Asgard doesn't have many people that live there, which is I thought was um, if you think about 
Thor Ragnarok, the actual movie, and that makes sense. There's, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. So I guess we'll have to yeah. revisit some of that information when we look at Thor Ragnarok. Uh, he, it, and Loki doesn't seem too bothered by the it, the destruction. Well, he did start crying a little bit. Um, he did, yeah, he did seem a little bit emotional about the end of of his home. Um, which, I, yeah, yeah, he did. All right, next. All right, here's uh, here's maybe this is an Easter egg. Uh, maybe not. And I actually meant to look this up, but I didn't. So, uh, one of the trinkets. Uh, I think I think this is something Mobius had. Um, he has a pen from Franklin D. Roosevelt High School. Where is that any significance? Where to was that? that? It's oh, either in right. a scene. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Yes, yes. It definitely has a significance. I don't think it has a comic book significance, but it will have a significance for the show at some point. Uh, that's going to come up. Um, it might have something to do with their origins. Uh, cause like, it seems like he, he looked at, he highlighted it. Maybe it'll come up later, but I didn't, I, uh, but the sh- here's the deal. The show is throwing us a lot of these kind of like Easter eggs and it's hard to figure out what you should pay attention to versus what you shouldn't. But I didn't right. know, I didn't yeah. notice that, but I didn't, I didn't see any comic book. I didn't see any immediate comic book references with that. And, I didn't, and to be honest with you, I didn't see a whole lot of comic book references in general. But we do have some stuff to talk about with this um, uh, Loki, the woman Loki. We got some stuff to talk about with that. Right. Um, yeah, I figure that's probably where we'll spend a lot of our time this episode. Okay, so, all right, nothing with uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt High School, at least yet. We'll see if that comes back. Um, so I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the hunt uh, in this Loki series. I'm on the hunt for things that remind me of Quentin Tarantino movies. I know you since. are. Since they said that that's part of their inspiration um, for the series, you see anything yet? Not uh, again, not really. But that that scene where they're in the cafeteria and they're having that conversation, that just that dialogue heavy, um, not a whole lot of camera movement or anything like that. That does seem like maybe that's one of the inspirations they're drawing from Quentin Tarantino is just the dialogue. In this in this series, there's a lot of it, and it's pretty well written. Yeah, maybe I can see that. Uh, it could be also like some of the camera work style as well, and it's very stylish in general. So maybe, okay, right, okay. Um, comic characters hiding in apocalypses. That's the kind of the the big idea that Loki has in this in this episode. Is is that something that's happened in in comics before? Oh well, yes. Uh, there's been plenty of times where a comic book villain or a comic book character, like a comic book villain mostly hides out in some crazy place. Like uh, Kang the Conqueror, I think he is in limbo. Um, I think Amortus, Amortus has his base in, I think, Purgatory. Uh, so there's different little places like that, like little hiding places. Like if you are a time traveling villain, you have to have a home outside of time and space uh, so like like the like limbo uh purgatory stuff like that so but the 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 idea that um the loki variant keeps going back to the same catastrophe over and over because it's a nice hiding place to stay safe i thought that was very inspired i thought that was smart mm. and it's a really interesting way i'm only gonna use the word interesting once today uh, but it's a really interesting way to handle this uh, time travel uh, dilemma that they've created. And I, and I keep going back to Avengers Endgame, how they kept saying in Avengers Endgame, you can't change time. If you, if you go into the past and alter it, it creates a new time branch. And mm-hmm. the time variance authority's job is to prune those branches. So they don't go back in time and change anything. Um, but they do, but like Amobius said, they can't like so it was a the scene where the variant kills the agents and then Mobius go they go to that timeline to check it out or to that part to check it out. Uh they uh Loki asked, Hey, how come you just can't go back in time and stop the variant before she does it? He does it or whatever does it. And Mobius say we can't, it's a fluid timeline. If you do that, we will create variants. So I thought that was a really clever way 
uh, to fix that. But at the very end, we did see right. all those branches get created. So this whole mm-hmm. sacred timeline mess is about to go away. Like, and for the good of the show, and probably for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're going to need a multiverse. And it looks like it started, and I, it doesn't look like I think from what I saw, they won't be able to prune all those branches. Uh, so it looks right. like we're about to see a very like we're going to see a, some cool um, time stuff coming up real soon. Yeah, it's all hands on deck at the end of that episode. All of the troopers are rolling out. Yeah. You know, even the judge is grabbing her baton and her helmet. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was good because why like why wait for the inevitable? Like I, I like the fact that they're just doing it. Like we have like six episodes and it's episode two, right. yep. and they're already mm-hmm. screwing up everything. I thought that was smart. And just just I will say I was surprised that it happened so soon. I was too, but judging like. We don't know. We there's a couple scenes where Loki is fighting someone, uh, but we don't have any details about what happens for the next six episodes. I, like it's gonna be, it's all new. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm very excited. All right. Um, so the the store that they're hiding out in, or I, I guess that uh, Lady Loki is hiding out in, in Alabama, is called Rock's Cart. Yeah. Does that show up in the comics? Yeah, it sure does. Uh, it's it's a company called Rocks Roxon O R O R O X X O N Roxon. So that's definitely a company in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they're bad dudes. They're not good people. Uh, uh-huh. So so actually, you see them a lot. I think they actually showed up in Agents of Shield, if I'm not mistaken, at some point. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much we're going to see them in the comics i mean in the show i don't see how much mm-hmm. we're going to see him um but we might we'll see but um Rock, what, Rock, what does this company do in the in the comics? everything bad man like if you need a bad if you need a company to do evil things like Roxon's going mm-hmm. to do it so like it's just it's, like, it's just it's not so they they're so they're in the oil industry they're in the that... energy industry the oil industry they um yeah. they make things accidentally create bad like super villains all the time it is like if you need a company to make some bad stuff, call on Roxton. Mm-hmm. And that's just a classic thing. Um, but it's like, it's nothing any, it's not, you don't have to get any deeper. Uh, there's a lot of Marvel co- co- comic characters that have been tied to Roxton. But I don't know, I doubt that Loki's going to spend a whole bunch of time with that, to be honest with you. Uh, and the first yeah. appearance of Roxton was in 1974 in Captain America. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Did um did Roxon ever open a store called Rock's Cart? Not that I know of. Okay. But I yeah, wasn't sure that. if it was a comic reference or just a interesting play on Ox Cart. Oh, it's, yeah, no. Roxon's huge. It's not, Roxon's not huge. It's hard to explain. Marvel has so many things in the Marvel comics that anyone who wants to make a TV show can just pluck out and use. That like mm-hmm. there's like there's four or five different companies like Roxon in the comics that we could easily just use, right? And it's just a, it's right. a, it's an interesting thing they just kind of plucked in. I'm gonna put them in the show notes for you. Okay. All right. Uh, so I my next point, and it's really kind of the last one, is just about Lady Loki. Is there anything before we talk about her that you want to bring up? Uh, I want to first talk about oh anything bef- anything not. Connected to her, um, right? No, yeah. I do. No, the show was kind. Of, it, oh, I a pretty good guess. I see that this Roxon Energy Corporation was otherwise known as the Roxon Oil Company. It, yeah, so. it's pretty funny. And <laughs> right. they, I, I like that they use them when it comes to a tragedy connected to to, to um the climate change, which is thought was right. Nice. Yeah, that's that's interesting too. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, what I will say is this, before we get to Lady Loki, um, I'm glad that we're going to break out of the Tom Ferris Authority quickly, because I was getting a little bored. <laughs> because the premise of the show already has been done, so I was like, well, I mean, okay, it's time for us to do something different. And I'm glad that we finally did get to see something different, so I'm I'm glad that we're moving forward pretty fast. But I, I am mm-hmm. worried, just based off what we saw last episode, that we're not going to get a whole lot of comic stuff. But we'll just have to wait and see. All right. Okay. On to Lay Loki. So. All right. There. 
is a bunch of theorizing out there about who this person is. I have three theories, okay? And these, there's two theories. There's one theory that's the most popular, and there are two theories that I think could work. And now we'll tell you my take on it. So first theory, that's okay. probably the, that's the most popular right now based off of people uh, looking at IMDBs and stuff like that, is that this character, the Lay Loki, is called Sylvie, Sylvie Lustin. Sylvie Lustin. She's in the show notes. And okay. Sylvie Lustin is a person that Loki created after Loki was re, um, reincarnated. And it's a long, long story. But at some point, all the Asgardian gods are reincarnated on Earth. And um, you can just imagine what that would be like. And Loki creates, uh, or e- either Loki gives powers to someone, or or he creates someone called Sylvia Lustin. Now, in the comics, Sylvia Lustin is blonde, and in the IMBD, like it, I, I, don't, I think it might be in the, in the IMBD information or some other people, like some press releases and stuff. People found out that the woman. That we see that is that that reveals herself. It like her character is called Sylvie, so it could be that. Okay. It d- yeah, I, I watched it on my Apple TV, and um, they were just calling her actor mm-hmm. uh, in the in the credits just to kind of hide. Yeah, I, you know, keep that keep that to a secret. I think that's good. Um, and if it is they, the story with this character is that Loki created her. Uh, she has some powers. And she doesn't like Loki because he didn't he um he she doesn't like Loki because of a variety of reasons and they end up, you know, hijinks and shit. So that's one. The next one, it, this character could be the enchant the enchantress. Uh the enchantress is also a trail maker from Asgard. She's way old school. She's from the 1964, I think that's when we first see her. So it could be the enchantress. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If this is the Enchantress, she doesn't really have a lot of connections to Loki, so I don't think it's her, but it could be. Uh, Sylvia Lustin also uh, called herself the Enchantress at some point as well, so it, it, it might be, like, at some point we might uh, see that this character calls herself the Enchantress. There's also uh, an idea that this isn't a popular theory, but there's this character called Leah that Loki creates as well that doesn't have, like, a complete soul. It's kind of confusing who this person is Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, But Leo became angry at Loki because he created her but didn't flesh her out. And this is kind of connected to someone called Kid Loki. And yes, there is a character called Kid Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, And all this stuff, Leah, Kid Loki, Sylvia Lustin, all happened within the last, I would say... 10 years or so. So they're relatively new and they're probably based off of the popularity of the Thor and Loki characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, okay. So, and my final theory could be that this Loki's just a woman. If you watch the episodes, they Mobius shows that Loki. That's what I was thinking. That Loki shows. Just yeah, that cycles through from and a different many different universe yeah, or something. Different yeah. incarnations. Um, and it could just be like a, a, like at some point Loki was born a woman in a different um, reality, and that makes a lot of sense to me because Loki is using the Lady Loki is using um, powers that are very similar to our Loki, um, and I, I just I don't know what they're going to do with this, but I don't know why it's so shocking. Did you feel that way when they revealed that it was a woman? How did, um, you, how did you feel? When you saw that, that the variant was a woman, how did you feel? I think they softened it, um, didn't they, during the episode? Because you see her completely disguised, but it looks like it's a... <clears throat> excuse me. It looks like it's a smaller frame mm-hmm. earlier in the episode. So it seems like they kind of softened it a little bit. Um, if I'm remembering that right, I, I wasn't, I wasn't very surprised. Um, I wasn't shocked by it. Definitely. Um, Me neither. I mean, we've got a, we've got a, a, a woman, Dr. Who, um, uh, I know in the comics, Thor, uh, becomes a woman in some way. So why not, 
why not Loki as a woman? Yeah, that's how I felt. I mean, when I woke up on on Wednesday morning, people were like, no spoilers, no spoilers. That's not really a spoil. If in the very show they say, here's different variations of Loki. And one Loki had, was like a big monster type dude. And one Loki was weird looking. Like, I would have been shocked. Right. I would have been more shocked if Loki was black. I'd be like, what? Like, I would have been like, oh my goodness. Um, but as a yeah. woman, I'm like, I just don't understand why they could be like, why this is, why that's shocking when we know that multi universes create different variants of different people. Uh, but in this, in this case, in this story, if that's what this is, and also all those alternate Lokis that they showed, isn't that kind of a plot hole? Because isn't in this story at least, there's only one timeline. There's not multiple universes. But they did say... The, they, the timekeepers put the Nyx on the multiverse. Yeah, but they did say that uh, there were a lot of Loki variants. Like they did say um, that... Yeah, but it doesn't make sense that they would appear differently. like Because they all have to originate from oh. this one timeline. Yeah. Um, so they can't, they can't have phys- different physical appearances. That's actually a really, really good point, Mike. Um, that's a really good point. I can't really explain that. I can't. I can't. I can't explain okay. it in a couple different ways. Um, one, like for example, we don't exactly know how bad the multi the multi um, universe war was. So we, they, they they could have existed because of that. Uh, and also mm-hmm. too, um, the branches themselves. The branches might have been occurred because the Loki's were created like the way they were, like. For example, um, Loki's born a, a girl, and all of a sudden there's a timeline branch. And then maybe someone's smart enough to know that the time variance authority exists, and they figure out ways to get to to escape. You know, there's all kinds of different story explanations they could do. And I'm pretty sure that next episode is going to be the origin story of that variant. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, so they'll explain it at some point. Um, that would make sense. Yeah. I- I hope they have a good explanation for it because otherwise it seems like they, with that pretty throwaway scene, they created a, a, a plot hole for themselves that they didn't need to. Well, is it a plot hole just a top, just a just a uh, Tom Branch? Like you know, it's like it's just a plot hole to say like that plot hole might explain a lot. Like it might be a plot hole on purpose. I don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is they need to explain it, or? They just created an error that they didn't really need to. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't even you think know, about it. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Like, you make sense. Like, the sacred timeline is supposed to be one way, and all of a sudden we get a a, a bunch of different Lokis that look a different ways. How could that happen? Uh, maybe they'll. Right. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they'll explain. We we'll have to. We we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, because like uh, earlier in this episode and the previous episode, you know, I I thought just all of these variants that they were tracking that were Loki were Loki breaking off of the sacred timeline at different points. So if there's a particularly dangerous Loki that they're tracking down, that's Loki that broke off of the timeline, you know, either at one of his low points when he was broken down and and very vengeful. So that's why that one's more dangerous than, you know, the one that's in this show, um, who they say, you know, isn't really dangerous at all. Yeah. And it's also it could be, too, it's like maybe the sacred timeline, maybe a, a Loki variant doesn't become a problem maybe the, maybe ragnarok explains it you know maybe uh i'm not sure how but maybe um the idea that these local variants exist is because of ragnarok maybe they'll have to explain that because ragnarok is a catastrophe and they have explained that you can hide in catastrophe so maybe they'll have to work on that well we'll have to wait and see um but i'm sure right. i'm sure they have a plan but what i want to get to is it doesn't really matter what wh- who she is from a comic standpoint, in my view. Not really. Uh, I'm just very curious to see how they how they do explain it and um, who she ends up like, actually being. Because like when she says, "Don't call me Loki, call me Randy," she doesn't even want to be a- attached to Loki. Uh, but the idea that that maybe like some people argue that this isn't Loki at all. It's not a Loki time variant. It's somebody completely different. Uh, that could be true, but it's not as interesting as it could be. We'll just have to wait and see. I could re- I- yeah, I don't, I don't buy that. I, I think she just, 
um, doesn't want to be associated with Loki. Yeah. With yeah, with this other Loki, like they have the same name and everything. Yeah, um, and I, it, 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 does it, does Sylvie or any of those other Loki as a woman from the comics that you talk about? Do do any of them wear the um, the same kind of Nordic headdress that Loki wears? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I said, I, and and to and to be clear, Sylvie and the Leah characters aren't versions of Loki; they're children of Loki. That could be a really mm-hmm. cool story. I like the idea. Right. That maybe the time that maybe these time variants existed because Loki had children or created children, and that's why the branch created. And if that's the case, then the time variants authority is trying to kill Loki's children that he doesn't even know exist. So that might cause him to, to kind of connect to her. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Um, now, Mobius def- no, clearly said the variant that we're tracking is you. Yeah. So. And they would know, right? Like they would know based off their technology. And they said they had like a time aura and everything else. They would know that 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 is actually Loki. It would be like a weird mm-hmm. sidestep for them to create a different explanation about who he is based off the last what they said. So I'm with you. I think this is straight up a woman Loki. Who cares? Let's see what they come up with. Uh, hopefully it's not one of these other like Leah I think uh, from, from my research if it is Leah that would be really cool but I'm not a real big fan of the Sylvia Lustin character I don't hope it, hopefully it's not that but we, and like we'll just have to wait to see unless they've got some spin on it that 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 now works you know yeah I don't know I, I'm I'm more curious like 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 Sylvie's just a name that this Loki adopted so that she doesn't have to go by Loki yeah I like that that, that sort of thing you know yeah well, again, uh, the episode, I, I thought the episode was strong. I was a little bored with it, but I'm glad. The very end um, was very connect, very interesting. Uh, I, w- right. I, did you notice when Loki was fighting the people that were possessed by Lady Loki, did you notice that they were just as strong as he was? Remember, he could go toe-to-toe with Thor as far as strength-wise. Like Captain America punched him, and he, he barely felt it, right? So mm-hmm. like he's stronger than most people, but he when he was fighting the these average people, I guess when they were possessed, they were stronger. But he he should be stronger and more capable than the agents around him. So I, they didn't talk about it, but I wish they would have. Right. Uh. Yeah. I, I guess it didn't really stand out to me, but yeah. I mean, they were definitely matched on power. Um. But I guess when Loki possesses somebody for lack of a better word then they get stronger all of yeah I, I mean, they basically have all of his abilities yeah maybe we'll, we'll see that's i think that's a plot hole um because you can't have a movie where loki can fight captain america and be stronger than him uh but then have him get beat up by a redneck in a, in a walmart so i don't know right so overall what right. you think, overall what do you think the I episode mean, I thought it was pretty good, pretty good. Um, I like, you know, I, I liked it. Uh, again, I think it. A lot of this whole series, kind of depends on what they do from this point on. Yeah, like they've either they've either set themselves up for some brilliant twists, um, or you know, they've created some problems that they didn't need to do for themselves. I don't know. I, I'm sure that I'm sure it's more of the brilliant twists because they they had to think of this you know more than i have so yeah I, i'm actually surprised like if we look at if we take wandavision as a template wandavision didn't have a lot of comic source story in it from the very beginning mm-hmm. we got that later like around episodes three and four and five uh so maybe we have to wait a little bit longer to see more of that comic book energy that i'm looking for Mm-hmm. Um, but as it is now, I'm willing to I'm willing to wait for for next week to see um to see if it kind of blossoms more. I think it will. I mean, I, yeah, I mean they they definitely opened the door to something. Yeah, you know, doing that whole um uh, all those branches of the, the the timeline so early in the series. So yeah, and I, I can't wait to see how that all turns out. I'm pretty excited. Uh, the next episode is definitely going to be fascinating, if not interesting. <laughs> I'm hoping this. I'm hoping this leads us one step closer to the timekeepers and 
Kang and Amortis. I'm hoping to see because uh, like it's obvious to me that we're going to get a multiverse at the end of all this. So okay, I can't wait for all that. So again, I think the first episode was really strong. The second episode, okay, we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, I like, I mean, the the acting is great. The special effects and the stories working out pretty well. I, I thought it was really funny. They went to Pompeii. Uh, I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, strong episode. But but not a lot of uh, comic book stuff this episode. So I was a little disappointed. But maybe we'll get some more stuff later. Right. All right. Anything anything else before we end this podcast? Uh, no, I think we're good. I, I do want to say this. I don't see how they don't show Thor at some point with all this stuff. So I'm hoping that maybe at some point we'll get some Thor's action. Or at least somebody from Asgard besides Loki. So hopefully that'll happen, but let's just wait. Okay. That's it. All right. Well, if you're listening to this podcast, please tell a friend that really does help. Um, Also, you can follow us, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you can find podcasts. Also, follow us on Twitter. uh, And if, if you have a theory about who the Lady Loki is, if you thought it was shocking, uh, hit us up on Twitter, d- slide into our DM, send us an email, uh, let us know if we're missing something. Because uh, I felt that more people were shocked than I was <laughs> about it. So maybe right. maybe I'm just kind of a jaded old man. We'll have to wait and see. But again, you hit us up and let us know if we're missing anything. Yeah, maybe you know like why my supposed plot hole isn't a plot hole. Please you know, help us out there. You actually came up with a pretty good plot hole. You actually did. I'm impressed. Yeah, I, I, I'm genuinely impressed. I, I'm thoroughly <laughs> impressed that that's the plot. I just don't read comic books, you know. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. If you read comic books, you just like kind of like look the other way because there's so many plot holes. <laughs> uh, but, but I guess <laughs> right. like that's what that's why we got the podcast the way it is. All right. Well, join us next week for more Loki.